Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I have what is probably one of the most exciting talk through videos that I shall in fact do throughout this entire year as we have in fact essentially got the entire product lineup for 2022 as well as bleeding into early 2023 in regards to not only Transformers Studio Series but also in regards to the highly rumoured, highly awaited Transformers Legacy lineup and honestly oh my goodness these particular leaks are super super exciting. Now the figures that I shall be discussing in today's video haven't as of yet been officially confirmed although I Personally, I'm just going to say that these are exactly the figures that we can expect to see next year. We've got all of the correct names now. We know the actual wave assortments up until wave three and in some regards wave four of each individual wave. And we've also got the specific quantity that that specific character will in fact have in a wave. So I definitely think we're more than likely going to see all of these characters next year, if not very early 2023. And honestly, it's just super, super exciting. Now, unlike some of my previous videos where I focused solely on Transformers Legacy, we have got the entire product lineup for next year's Transformers Studio Series. And my my goodness, for those of you like myself who are diehard live action movie fans, we are absolutely in for a treat and about damn time too. 2021 has arguably been the most driest year for studio series live action figures, but next year we're in for some whoppers. And to be fair, it's actually the 86 movie line which appears to be taking a slight backbench. And this particular product line does not include anything from Transformers Rise of the Beasts. So honestly, next year we're just going to be absolutely flooded with movie product and I'm just super, super excited. And that's even before we begin to touch base with Transformers Legacy, which is just an entire beast on its own. Now before we actually get into this video, I don't actually know the specific source of who to credit, however I did indeed get my information from Sabertron.com, so shall include a link down in the description box below where you guys can of course check out from the actual site where I got some of this information from. So without further ado, let's kick things off and take a look at the product lineup for Transformers Legacy and be sure to let me know down in the comment section below what characters you guys are most excited to actually see finally have an actual transforming figure and also be sure to let me know on what characters or figures you are most excited for. So to begin with, we'll start off with the core class for wave one core class we're expecting to see a skywarp a hot rod and an iguanas now skywarp will no doubt be a repaint of the core class star screen personally i'm actually all for it i think that's one of the best core class figures especially for the scale and the price point star screen was fantastic so to get it in the skywarp color scheme definitely super glad to have that then we're expecting to get a core class hot rod now this will no doubt be a brand new mold probably inspired by his appearance from the original g1 series so that once again is awesome i'm super glad to actually see core class continuing as in comparison to the battle masters and micro masters I think Core Class absolutely obliterates those. It's a fantastic skill, especially for the price point, the detail, and the engineering on those figures are some of the best. And I personally actually love these smaller scale figures. It throws me back to the old days where we used to get Legend Class or, of course, Scout Class figures. So definitely all for that. Hot Rod sounds incredibly exciting, of course, to go alongside the Ark and Unicron, some of those other characters that we've gotten that are of a much larger scale. And then we're also expecting to see Iguanas. Now, originally, I wasn't actually all that familiar with this character, but I believe that he was released as part of the basic line of toys for the original Beast Wars series. He's really, really cool design. I will, of course, include an image here of some of his original toys as well as some of the source material. So it is nice to see some of these more obscure characters actually making it in to the Transformers mainline. Then, of course, we skip to wave two. We're once again going to be seeing an Iguanas repack. Then we're expected to see Optimus Prime PR. Now, I personally am not all that familiar as to what this particular character could be. Straight away, Optimus Prime Prime comes to mind. So maybe this could be a core class Transformers Prime Optimus Prime. I guess we'll really just have to wait and see. But then we're expecting to see a core class G2 Megatron which is really exciting. Finally, we're getting some repaints into the core class line, of course, which was alluded to with Skywarp in Wave 1. So G2 Megatron will no doubt be a repaint of the G1 Megatron that we got in the second wave of core class for Kingdom. And then we're expecting to see a core class Shockwave, which is definitely super exciting. A Shockwave is one of my favorite Decepticon character designs. And to actually get him in the core class, honestly, is just super, super exciting. So really excited to actually see these particular characters. And then as we turn our attention to Wave 3, much like Optimus Prime, we're expected to see a sound wave PR. Now once again, straight to mind, Soundwave Transformers Prime comes to mind. Once again, I could be completely mistaken, but if that is the case, super exciting. We're then also expecting to see an Energon monster, which leads to a lot of speculation as to what this character actually is. I guess we'll just have to wait and see whether or not it will in fact actually be called Energon monster. Once again, is something we'll have to see, but definitely really intrigued to see as to what that could be. And then finally for Wave 3, we are indeed expecting to see a Skull Grin. So overall, really, really nice looking figures by the sounds of it. And of course, we're getting some brand new molds as well as repaints and the repaints we're getting whilst I know many of you won't be all that thrilled with I actually think they're really interesting repaints especially where that G2 Megatron and Skywarp are concerned. Then we turn to Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class. Now honestly this line for me is looking to be one of the best main lines ever even being a rival for the awesome War for Cybertron trilogy. So straight off the bat Deluxe Class Wave 1 we're expecting to see Autobot G1 Skids. This guy we all knew was on the horizon especially with a masterpiece figure coming out towards the end of this year. 9 times out of 10 when Hasbro make a masterpiece 
Beast figure and the mainline figure hasn't already come out. It usually comes out a couple of months after, so super glad to actually see Autobot skids. I'm actually wondering whether or not this will be a slight retool of the Jurassic Park JP93 figure that I recently reviewed over on the channel, as I actually think that would be a great basis for that. Of course, they would have to tweak it to work out some of those imperfections, but definitely really excited to see that guy. We're also expecting to see a deluxe class drag strip. Now, of course, this heavily indicates the rumor that we shall in fact be seeing the Stunticons and Motormaster in the Commander class, and that they are indeed going to be bringing back this almost Combiner Wars gimmick, where you can actually take some of these Stunticons, combine them with Commander class Motormaster, in order to, of course, create the Combiner Menosaur. Super exciting stuff. Drag strip, really, really looking forward to this guy. And of course, I'm a Transformers Prime fan as well. So Transformers Prime Deluxe Class RC, really cannot wait to see how that figure turned out. The RED figure that we got earlier this year, I thought was fantastic. Whilst it couldn't transform, I thought the robot mode was by far the closest we had ever gotten to CG accuracy. And I'm once again super excited to see not only some Transformers Prime figures back on the shelves, but also brand new molds with updated and modern technology with anchor rocker pivots, waist articulation, wrist articulation, and of course, high level of engineering. Of course, now Hasbro and Takara are both really carrying the main line. So super, super excited to see how this figure turns out. And then we're expecting to see a kickback. So of course, some Insecticons. Really, really glad to actually see these as well. These are indeed going to be deluxe class. So not core class. So there'll definitely be quite a substantial scale, which is really interesting. And then we move to wave two of the legacy deluxe class figures. So we're expecting to see once again, more Transformers Prime figures, this time in the form of Knockout. Now the original Knockout figure that we got, I believe in part of the RID Prime line, I personally didn't think was the best. The paint details absolutely sucked. And out of that entire line, I would say it's probably one of the weakest molds. So once again, to actually see this revisited with updated technology, super, super exciting. But then also expecting to see an actual G1 version of Elite One. So not the Netflix version that we got as part of the almost War for Cybertron trilogy. This is going to focus solely on her appearance from G1. Really, really exciting to actually see how this figure turns out. I'm praying that it's not just an actual shell former, much like Earthrise RC, and that they do actually go a little more involved and intricate with this, but really, really excited to actually see this. And then we're getting back to some of the Beast Wars characters. So some leftovers from Kingdom. Finally, we're going to be seeing Tarantulas. Tarantulas is a character that I've wanted ever since Wave 1 of Kingdom. Super glad to actually see this guy's finally going to get his release in the Deluxe Class Legacy Assortment. And then we're also expecting to see yet another Stunticon, I believe, this time in the form of Wild Rider. So once again, really alluding to the upcoming Commander Class Motormaster and ultimately that Combiner Menosaur. Really exciting stuff. Then we move to Wave 3. We're expecting to see Point Blank, Crankcase, an Energon Monster, so much like Core Class. However, this time it is in fact actually going to be packaged in the Deluxe Assortment and then Dead End. Now, Dead End could mean a few things. It could be a repaint of a Transformers Prime character or it could essentially just be the Stunticon Dead End. And considering we're getting Drag Strip as well as Wild Rider, it would stand to reason that this would be another G1 Stunticon. Super excited to see how that turns turns out it's actually quite surprising that we're getting essentially three of the Stunticons in the first couple of waves of Legacy so they're definitely going all in on this almost combiner gimmick super exciting and then for wave four we merely just have a breakdown now this too could also mean a couple of things it could be a Transformers Prime breakdown or it could be something completely different but in terms of deluxe class already this is looking super super solid some of the standouts for me of course are the Prime characters such as RC Knockout I'm also really excited to finally see Tarantulas and of course the Stunticons are going to be really really awesome to actually get our hands on, considering that ultimately the Combiner War ones weren't the best. So really exciting where that's concerned. And then we move to Voyager class and oh boy, it's only just going to get better from here. So in terms of wave one, we're expecting to get Autobot Blaster, which is rumored to actually be packaged in the fifth and final wave of War for Cybertron. So we could actually see this figure as early as this year. So that's really exciting stuff. So this could potentially be a repack, but Autobot Blaster, we're then expecting to see Transformers Prime Bulkhead. Always excited to see some Transformers Prime characters. Then we move to wave two we're expecting to see a prime sound wave i honestly just wasn't expecting this to be a voyager class figure i was expecting a deluxe class figure at least but to actually get as a voyager honestly is just so so exciting so prime sound wave considering he's a voyager class could we potentially be seeing those almost tentacles that he had in the show much like the recently reviewed apc toys version of sound wave that i took a look at over on the channel and then as we actually skip to wave three we're expecting to see an armada star scream so this once again confirms that legacy is in fact going to be a mix of every Every single world which is really exciting so Armada Starscream sounds great and then a Beast Wars Inferno much like Tarantulas super excited to actually see this guy as of course he was a character that we haven't gotten in Kingdom and the fact that he's actually a Voyager class makes me incredibly excited as I was merely expecting just a deluxe class perhaps a retool of Scorponok or even Waspinator but definitely awesome to see this guy Voyager and then we turn our attention to leader class so we're expecting to see a Laser Optimus Prime now Laser Prime I believe is in fact a G2 version of Optimus Prime so you're looking at that tanker truck as well as the front semi 
truck, so of course it would have to be a leader class. That's really exciting. I believe the last time we saw this guy was in a multi-pack. I'm not entirely sure. I think it was Battle of Velocitron, but that is definitely really exciting that we're going to be getting a brand new mold. I do believe that figure was originally based on a Combiner Wars figure, so the fact that we're actually going to be seeing an updated version of this is awesome. Then we move to Wave 2. Super exciting stuff. So we're expecting to see a Galvatron PR. I personally am not all that familiar as to what this could be. Potentially a Kingdom Galvatron repaint, or once again, Transformers Prime Galvatron, but I don't believe Galvatron ever actually appeared in Transformers Prime, so that could be completely thrown out the window. But then we're expecting to see Leader Class G1 Blitzwing. Now, once again, super excited not only to get Blitzwing at long last, updated version of this guy, which is well long overdue, but the fact this is going to be a Leader Class confirms that it's going to be very similar to the likes of Astro Train, so we're going to be seeing all three of the modes, the tank, the jet, the robot mode, and hopefully all to a really high level of accuracy, as well as an actual really well done figure as well with minimal hollow spaces. And then the third and final leader class for the first couple of waves of Transformers Legacy is a Dragon Megatron. Now this guy is also one that's been rumoured for quite some time. I think it's a great idea, very bold of Hasbro and Takara to actually pull off, considering that it's not as well known as the more traditional T-Rex version of Megatron. But Beast Dragon Megatron, super exciting, really cannot wait to see how that turns out. And I believe the last time we actually got a mainline version of this must have been way back in the 90s. That's as far back as I can remember. I can't think of any other Dragon Megatron figures that have actually been released so far. So once again, all incredibly exciting stuff. Transformers Legacy appears to be one of, if not the best mainline that we've ever ever seen. And that's maybe slightly biased considering that I love Transformers Prime, but some of these beast characters, as well as the impression that we're going to be seeing more Armada characters, the core class lineup, honestly, I just don't have any thoughts of any of these. I think every single one of them looks fantastic. And this video only gets better when we begin to discuss what products we can be expecting to see from the Transformers Studio Series. So straight off the bat, the Studio Series is hitting us with a very bold move and that is in fact the introduction of core class into the studio series up until this point we've really only gotten the likes of deluxe voyager and leader and then i guess you can almost class the devastator as a supreme class figure but we've never gotten core class for this and to be fair i kind of think that it's a little unfair considering that we've gotten some characters packaged in with leader figures that i really think would have been worthy of an actual core class figure some characters that come to mind would be the likes of scorponok ravage of course there are a couple of others so really hoping that we can almost get reissues of those that can in fact actually transform in the core class, but kicking wave one off is a TF6 version of Ravage. Now, before we actually get into this, one thing worth mentioning is that they do refer to all of the Bumblebee movie products as TF6, just as it's the sixth installment in the live action movie saga. So TF6 is Bumblebee, so Bumblebee movie Ravage, really exciting stuff. This also alludes to an upcoming Bumblebee movie Voyager Soundwave, which has in fact been rumored for quite some time. And then a TF6 version of Shockwave. So a Transformers Bumblebee core class version of Shockwave, slightly unusual. Definitely not disappointed by this, however, I'll just wonder how it will differ when in comparison to the core class shockwave that we're expecting to see from legacy whether or not they'll be different or slightly retools i guess we'll just have to wait and see and then we move to wave two core class two repacks so ravage and shockwave once again repacked but then we're actually going to be seeing an 86 version of spike now i expect this to perhaps be in the exo suit i could be completely mistaken but i don't think they would just release an individual humanoid character maybe they could but i personally would have much rather actually see a proper exo suit version of spike and not that awful version that i believe we got of daniel with slug now, once again, they could have just skipped that figure and given Slug his actual sword and then just kept him here for the core class. Why they didn't do that, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe this will, in fact, actually be a humanized version of Spike without the exosuit. Then we skip to wave three, brand new figures. So we're expecting to see an 86 version of Wheelie as well as an 86 version of Ratchet. Now, these are very interesting characters. Wheelie, once again, was a figure that we actually saw packaged with 86 Grimlock. So much like Spike, it would have been great if they could have just skipped that out completely and given the Dinobots their swords and then just kept those characters here for core class but a proper wheelie done right this time could turn out really really well the dna design kit is on the horizon and does appear to actually fix that wheelie that came packaged with the studio series version and it can in fact actually transform so will this character actually have a place in the collection i guess we'll just have to wait and see how it actually turns out 86 ratchet sounds incredibly promising once again super glad to actually see more of these 86 figures actually being introduced into core class some of these g1 characters and then we move to wave four tf3 laser beak so this straight away confirms that some of those minifigs that we actually got packaged with the mainline are in fact going to be revisited. Now this opens the door for so much potential considering they are in fact actually going to be producing new figures or figures that have already been made in Studio Series. We could actually see the likes of an actual accurate version of a Volkswagen Bumblebee done right. That would be really impressive. I personally would love to finally get that guy in a more movie accurate format but TF3 Laserbeak super impressive to actually hear that he's coming. Of course the only other DOTM Laserbeak we've gotten was packaged with Dark of the Moon Soundwave. It wasn't very articulated 
updated. The detail was okay. Wasn't painted all the best at the $10 price point. I think Hasbro could work wonders. We're also expecting to see a repack of Wheelie and something else which is really, really exciting is an actual 86 version of Rumble. So some of Salmay's minions actually being thrown in here now. Really, really intrigued to actually see how this turns out. Whether or not it will come with the pile drivers, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I expect it to considering that this is a core class, but core class for Studio Series, definitely a lot of repacks, but the new molds that we are going to be seeing all sound really interesting and I'll actually love to see how some of these characters that they're revisiting such as Laser Beak actually compare to their original versions. Then we turn to the Deluxe class for the Studio Series and this honestly is just so, so exciting. So much like I alluded to at the beginning of this video, for those of you who are a fan of the live action movies, you're going to have an absolute blast with these next couple of installments. Now one thing to mention is that they haven't gone all live action movie, they are still keeping it incredibly influenced by G1 and you'll see that considering that most of these are in fact inspired by the Bumblebee movie and of course all of those designs were very G1 just with a live action aesthetic but kicking things off for wave one we're expecting to see a TF6 version of Ratchet so a Bumblebee movie Ratchet really really excited to see how that turns out Ratchet had one of the coolest designs in that very short actual sequence at the beginning of Bumblebee we're also expecting to see TF6 Wheeljack super exciting once again Wheeljack's one of my favorite character designs so to actually see him is really really cool and we're also expecting to see Brawn also inspired by Bumblebee now I personally would have maybe liked to have seen the G1 version come out before this live action movie figure but nevertheless still incredibly exciting and considering that none of these characters actually transformed in the movie I'll be really intrigued to see as to what Hasbro come up with in terms of alt modes honestly they've literally got creative license here I'm expecting them to follow a very similar route to the likes of the DOTM leader Shockwave where they focus solely on the robot mode really nailing the accuracy and then the vehicle mode is almost an afterthought and considering their Cybertronian they really could come up with anything as wacky as they possibly like in order to just sort of compensate so really excited these are in fact going to be packaged with the upcoming already revealed 86 movie perceptor so once again we can expect to see these as early as the end of this year very early next year then we skip to wave two of the deluxe assortment and we are expecting to see a repack of both wheeljack and ratchet but then also a bumblebee movie version of rc really exciting i thought that design was fantastic she was definitely one of the characters that stood out among the rest in my opinion i think the designers of bumblebee captured her appearance perfectly and much like those other characters just super excited to see how she turns out especially for vehicle mode and the same goes for the next figure in this line a tf6 bumblebee movie version of ironhide one of my favorite autobot characters once again done in a deluxe assortment a little different when in comparison to the voyager class figure that we got for the live action movies so it'll be intriguing to see how the actual scale works out but that sounds really promising then we skip to wave three now this is where the michael bay characters are going to be coming in hard and fast so we can expect to be seeing a tf2 version of sideways now this is one that i'm actually really excited for considering i literally just did a throwback review of the original revenge of the fallen figure and in that video i stated that i really wanted to see this character and here he is literally confirmed we can expect to have this guy literally within the next 12 months that makes me super excited sideways had a super super cool design in the movie a design that we really didn't get to see a whole lot of so to actually get a studio series version of this super exciting whether or not it will in fact be a licensed audi r8 i guess we'll just have to wait and see then we are expecting to see a transformers dark the moon version of bumblebee i'm expecting this to be a slight retool of the revenge of the fallen version that we got maybe with finally a brand new head sculpt an unmasked version of that head would be awesome and then very surprisingly an 86 version of rc now could this be a repack of the Earthrise or kingdom rc i guess we'll just have to wait and see i'm actually really hoping that hasbro do something a little different here considering whilst that figure wasn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination it certainly wasn't the best and i'm actually quite surprised that they're doing two very similar styles of rc back to back so for wave two we've got that bumblebee movie version and then for wave three we've got the 1986 version but really intrigued to see as to what the differences will be between this version and of course the kingdom version or earthrise version and then for wave 4 this is super cool so we're expecting to finally get a tf5 version of hot rod now this will of course be the lamborghini and not the world war 2 version that we got released i believe two years coming up to three years ago now so a figure that was in dire need of an upgrade the original hot rod was in fact based on the age of extinction lockdown mold which was just terrible and that figure was also based on the dark of the moon roadbuster so a lot of reuse of the engineering for that guy so to actually see that this could potentially be a brand new mold super super exciting we're also expecting to see a transformers age of extinction version of crosshairs another figure which i think will finally be done right just as i don't really think any of the previous ones did it great you know the version that we got for the last night was definitely better when in comparison to age of extinction but still wasn't 100 percent perfect and then we're also expecting to see a repack version of that 1986 rc as part of the fourth and final wave of these deluxe figures then we move on to voyager class once again it's only going to get better so in terms of voyager class straight away we can expect to see bumblebee movie soundwave now of course this was heavily hinted when we actually discussed the tf6 version of 
Core Ravage. The fact that we're actually going to be getting Core Ravage means that the detail on that guy is going to be great. And he will, in fact, be, of course, compatible with the Wave 1 version of Soundwave. Great to actually see that they are packaged in Wave 1, so you don't have to wait forever to get either of these characters. You can essentially pick them up at, hopefully, the same time in order to pair them up. That's really exciting. Soundwave from Bumblebee has one of the best designs out of the entire live-action movie saga, so really exciting to see how he turns out. And then we're also expecting to see an 86 Hot Rod variant. Now, notice the word variant. I think that this is going to be slightly more inspired by some of the other Cell animations, so maybe this could be a slightly more pink-inspired version of Hot Rod. I do believe this was, in fact, actually hinted at in a live stream a couple of months ago, so that would be cool to see. It's nice to see that we are, in fact, going to be getting a few different variants of characters, or it could be something completely different, but I just can't really see how they can create a variant of Hot Rod without just spicing up the colour schemes. Then we jump to Wave 2, repack version of B-Movie Soundwave, but we're also expecting to see an 86 version of Junkyard. Now, this will no doubt be an actual retool of Retgar, another Junkyard. Super excited to actually get this, of course. You can take Retgar and essentially apply him to the bike mode of Junkyard, or vice versa, so it's awesome to actually see some Junkions. There were so many different designs for the Junkions in the actual Transformers 1986 movie, so really, the opportunities with that mold are endless. And then as we turn to Wave 3, this is so, so exciting. So we're expecting to see a rather standard figure, that in the form of Bumblebee movie Thundercracker, so this will no doubt be a repaint of the original Cybertron version of Starscream. Of course, we've already gotten a repaint and slight retool of that in the form of Thrust, but we're going to be seeing Thundercracker, and the actual figure that shall be a wave mate to Thundercracker is Transformers Age of Extinction Galvatron. Now, this was a character that pretty much on all of my top five wish lists that I've done throughout the years since the studio series has been out, this guy's always been either an incredibly high pick or he's definitely been on the list. And the fact that we could be seeing him as early as next year is just super, super exciting. I think Hasbro are really going to pull out all the stops of this guy. I think that's why they've left him so, so late, as I think they're really going to work on the engineering. The original Voyager figure that we got for Age of Extinction, I actually didn't think was a terrible figure, but of course, it was full of back kibble. It was essentially the definition of a shell former, and the paint apps were just dreadful. So to get this guy, super exciting to actually see as to what they can come up with, especially considering that the time this guy comes out, it'll be roughly nine or ten years since Age of Extinction actually hit the silver screen. So really, really exciting to actually see as to what they come up with this guy. Then we turn our attention to the leader class. We already know about the first figure, and that is the 86 King version of Starscream. So that guy is a part of Wave 1. For Wave 2, the Dinobots are in fact continuing. Not live-action movie Dinobots, sadly, but the 1986 versions, as we're going to be seeing Sludge. Now, this pretty much confirms that Hasbro are going to essentially give us all of the Dinobots updated. That's super exciting. I actually love that for the most part, so far, they've all been in the leader assortment. I have heard rumours that Swoop is indeed supposed to actually be in the Voyager, and I guess that kind of makes sense, considering he's a pterodactyl. He's a little smaller. When in comparison to some of the other dinos that we've got in this, but A6 Sludge, definitely very exciting. Whether or not he'll include a minifigure is yet to be seen. And then we turn to Wave 3. Now, this has got to be one of, if not the most highly anticipated live-action Michael Bay character ever. And once again, much like Sideways, he was a figure that I very recently actually revisited over on the channel. It is a TF Revenge of the Fallen version of The Fallen, finally done in the leader assortment. Now, all of the figures up until this point have merely been Voyagers, and I actually thought the hunt for the Decepticons figure was fantastic. It had great attention to detail, the fact that you could actually remove the faceplate, and it came with the staff was awesome, but I've always wanted a Revenge of the Fallen Studio Series version, and to actually see that this could also be within my grasp within the next 12 months is just so, so exciting. So overall, Studio Series Transformers Legacy, just honestly, Hasbro, just take my money. Every single one of these figures are just so exciting. And we haven't even discussed the Commander or Titan class figures as they haven't really been confirmed yet. So really and truly, next year's product lineup appears to be some of the best. And this doesn't even count any of the Transformers Rise of the Beast figures. Those are all as of yet, yet to be confirmed, yet to be listed. So next year, honestly, is gonna be a super expensive time for live action movie fans, as well as fans in general of Transformers. And I am just so excited. Legacy sounds super exciting. Something really, really different when in comparison to some of the other lines they've done, of course, I'm Marder figures, Transformers Prime figures at long last, Beast Wars characters introduced into that, really, really awesome, and of course, by the sounds of the Energon Monster, some new original concept ideas, and then Studio Series, once again, so exciting. Finally, Core class in this, the Deluxes with the Bumblebee movie stuff sounds great, the Voyager class, once again, Galvatron, as well as the TF6 Bumblebee movie version of Soundwave, and then Leader class with Sludge and the Fallen, 
It's just so, so exciting. I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of some of these figures that I've discussed. All of these are scheduled to be released in the next 12 months. So honestly, I just am so excited. I just really want to see some product renders considering that Wave 1 is in fact a part of the Wave with this King Starscream and Perceptor figures that we've already had announced. Announcements for some of these Bumblebee movie characters such as Ratchet, Wheeljack and Soundwave and Brawn are definitely sooner rather than later. I'm expecting to see these guys officially shown at the next fan fest or this big Hasbro Pulse event that they've got planned for next month. So we'd love to know down in the comment section below what you guys think of some of the product we can be expecting to see next year. Do you guys think that it is a marked improvement when in comparison to what we've seen this year? Personally, in regards to Studio Series, I think it could potentially be the best year we've seen for this line so far. Devastator, I thought, reached a pinnacle, but here with what we're seeing, I honestly am super, super excited. So I thank you guys all so much for watching. Please feel free to let me know what you thought of both the video as well as some of the figures I've discussed. And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.